Hello and welcome to another episode of the Best of Buckeye. I'm School Superintendent Brian Williams and we're here today to talk about Gifted. And my special guest is Chris Rustledge, our Gifted Coordinator. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Um, maybe you can just tell us a little bit about yourself first before we get started. Just a little bit about your background. I know you've been uh, doing the Gifted thing for a while and we're so lucky to have you with us this year. So maybe you can tell us about yourself. Well, I've been in gifted education for about 10 years. Um, I was a gifted intervention specialist when I came to uh, I came to the Educational Service Center about four years ago as a uh, gifted coordinator. And then I work in two different districts right now as a gifted coordinator. And what does a coordinator do exactly? A coordinator is the person who keeps the district on track, making sure that they are in compliance with um, Ohio's regulations for gifted education. Mm -hmm. Good. And we're so lucky you're here doing that for well, us. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Your reputation precedes you and when we heard you were coming here this year we were felt very fortunate about that. And it's thank you. certainly proving to be true. Um, for some people out there they may not really know exactly, they've probably heard of gifted before, but they may not know exactly what is gifted or how does somebody be become uh, identified as gifted. Can you talk a little bit about what it means to be gifted? Right. So I'm going to tell you the Ohio's definition of gifted. Gifted means students who perform or show potential for performing at remarkably high levels of accomplishment when compared to others of their age, experience, or environment. Very good. Okay. The technical definition. So in layman's terms. <laughs> in layman's terms, it's those children who go above and beyond that are really searching for more. Um, the children who are problem solvers, they're kind of exceptional in, mm -hmm. in their performance mm -hmm. in whether it's academic or it could be art-wise, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. visual. Good. Um, so is there, um, you know, if, if a student that just works really hard, Mm -hmm. Are they necessarily gifted or maybe not necessarily gifted just because you work very hard? They may not necessarily be gifted, but certainly they have a life skill that's going to serve them well. So good for them that they mm -hmm. are working hard. Mm -hmm. um, the opposite of that, you could have a gifted child who can get things easily but does not show, you know, mm -hmm work hard mm -hmm. where they are not getting as far, may not get the grades that mm -hmm. a person who does not have a gifted identification mm -hmm. might have. So the work ethic is very important whether you're gifted or not. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> we certainly always want to build that work ethic in kids. Right. But you could have a gifted student who may not be performing up to their ability level um, for various reasons. I suppose they could be maybe bored, maybe they're not challenged enough and part of that is kind of our, our goal then is when we find a gifted student is to challenge them so that they are working up to their potential and their ability. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. And how do we do that? How does how does Buckeye go about challenging those kids? I, maybe let me back up first. Um, the law prescribes how Buckeye schools handle students that are gifted, and that means um, identifying those kids. Um, but maybe could you mind talking a little bit about what the law says with regards to identification and serving? All right. In the state of Ohio, schools are required to identify gifted students. However, it is not mandated that they serve gifted students. So depending on different schools, um, you'll find many technical gifted services at different schools. Um, and some schools you will not find any gifted services. So that's why there's a an array out there as what services you're going to see. And I would say, and I could be wrong, but I would say Buckeye probably falls somewhere in the middle. Uh, I would say. Yeah, that so. we, 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 um, we certainly provide opportunities for our gifted students to uh, excel in areas that they excel, but we certainly, uh, unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, mostly being financial, part of it being our size a little bit, it's sometimes hard to provide as many opportunities when you may only be dealing with a few kids in a grade level, perhaps, that are gifted. Um, but I think the financial aspect also makes it a challenge sometimes to provide a variety of programs for gifted students. Um, and I think our district falls into that to some degree. Right, because to be gifted services, consider gifted services, students need to be served by a person who has a master's degree in gifted education. So they need to be with that person at least 200, more than 200 minutes per week uh, mm -hmm. directly you know, having experiences with that person. So it, it is hard to 
reach that. Um, there's also AP services, which the AP teachers have gone through training, so those do count as gifted services. So Buckeye definitely has a strong AP program that they are serving their high school students. So maybe we start that way and work our way down. So I, I right. think, and, and again, just from my experience, that sometimes in the older grades it's a little easier to serve because you do have natural programs such as our AP programs or our honors programs, although I think honors may not necessarily be count as gifted programs, although many of our gifted students are in those honors and AP Correct. classes, although some may not count as per se a gifted class because it may not be taught by a gifted instructor as you've mentioned. But as you get into, even in the junior high, we do have some accelerated classes that uh, some of our gifted students are participating in that hopefully are challenging them. True. So those may not um, necessarily be gifted services, but they certainly are enrichment services. Mm -hmm. So we're working on finding students who really could benefit from acceleration and, and trying to meet their needs. Um, beyond that, it is enrichment and extension activities and really educating um, teachers and hopefully working with those teachers that I can work with them to provide experiences mm -hmm. to stretch the learners. And you do. You work with a lot of our teachers and uh, try to help them to challenge those kids within their classroom settings. So I guess that kind of right. does take us to that elementary, kind of that second grade through sixth grade. Um, can you talk about the challenges maybe that exist when you have somewhat self-contained classrooms like we do in elementary and still trying to serve those kids that have been identified as gifted? Right. So the teachers are doing a great job as far as differentiating and they're very aware of where their students are and trying to work with the students to enrich them. Um, and by that we're talking about deeper experiences and meeting their reading levels and really you know, pushing those kids without being, oh, here's an additional packet right. of extra work to right. do because right. that's not what we're talking right. about. Right. We're talking about truly deep and meaningful right. learning right. experiences. And, and challenging them and, mm -hmm. and uh, developing those critical thinking skills and uh, making them, you know, perhaps look at the same problem in a different way. Right. You know, how do you go deeper into, say, a word problem or something of that nature? Again, so that they're, they're not being asked to just to do more busy work. Right. That's not what we're all about. Right. I like how you said look at it a different way. And right. That's, that's, right. And that's, that's a trick. I mean, that's right. that's hard. That takes extra work on the teacher's part to, mm -hmm. um, to for they have, they have to look at the problem in a different way to challenge those kids in their class that may be um, wanting a little bit of a deeper, richer experience. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Good. Um, now, I know this is always, and I, this is probably a loaded question, but I'll ask it anyway. Okay. Um, I, I think people in education, and I will tell you that I have a certain, um, I guess, philosophy, but there is a difference between enrichment and acceleration. Can Correct. you talk a little bit about that, those ideas? I mean, enrichment meaning we're going to take you at your grade level and provide opportunities for you to go deeper and to, to think critically and to enhance your skills at your grade level, as opposed to saying we're going to take this fifth grader and move them into sixth grade accelerating them, you know, because they can handle it. Now, so for some kids, it's very appropriate that they're so far advanced that maybe they do need to be accelerated. So there's a difference there necessarily between enrichment and acceleration. Correct. And enrichment is exactly what you said, you know, going deeper and giving more opportunities to really look in different ways at things. Acceleration, to do formal acceleration, it's, it's really moving students from, away from their, um, peers, you know, to, or I should say grade level peers, to where they are academically, where there's a good academic fit. And that is quite a, a, an evolved process mm -hmm. to do that. You can do a whole grade acceleration or you can do single subject acceleration. Mm -hmm. Ohio Department of Education sees that as an anomaly, mm -hmm. which means there are very few students mm -hmm. that are in that, mm -hmm. you know, situation. Mm -hmm and it involves written education plans and written acceleration plans and a group of teachers and parents working together as a team to, to solve that and figure out where, what would be the best learning environment. It's not unheard of no. to do that, and we certainly have uh, evaluated kids before mm -hmm. in order to uh, identify whether that's appropriate for them, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly challenging kids with their peers and at their grade level and giving them deeper, richer experiences um, for most kids, that's satisfactory. I mean, that will help them to be challenged, to push themselves mm -hmm. so that they do feel like they're um, reaching their potential, I guess, with their grade level peers. 
Right, because we also need to think not only of cognitive needs, but social and emotional needs, which mm -hmm. are very important. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. taking the whole child into yeah. account. And you certainly don't want to hurt a kid socially, emotionally, no. trying to identify or, I guess, trying to uh, reach their potential from an academic standpoint. Right. We don't want to do that. Right. It's a very looking at the whole child process. Right, right, right. Right. Well, and, and this is an area that I will tell you from a standpoint of a school superintendent, it's an area that I wish we could do more. You know, it's an area that I wish we could provide more opportunities for those students that are gifted. And I think it is something that over the last several years we have done more and we have added programs. But I think sometimes for those kids that are gifted, it's, it won't be enough. You know, there it will always be a need to challenge kids right. that, um, that are ready to do that. And we want to provide that and we'll continue to look for those opportunities. Um, anything either state-wise or locally here coming down the pike for, from a gifted standpoint that we should be looking for? Um, well, there are new operating standards that are coming up for gifted education, so we're waiting to see those come out. They've been um, being discussed for at least a year, mm -hmm, so we're, mm -hmm. we're looking forward to those. So there might be some changes in gifted education. Um, I would recommend parents to go to the ODE website and look at gifted education mm -hmm. for a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as enrichment activities, I have put some information on the websites, so there's a link through the individual schools that they can find okay. some information, and I'm trying to put quarterly newsletters out so, um, so parents can find some extension activities. Good. How do they get hold of you if somebody had a question or wanted to find out a little bit more about gifted education in Buckeye? Okay. Well, I'm in the district on Mondays and Tuesdays, but the most convenient way to get me would be through the Educational Service Center. Um, if they would call and leave a message at the Educational Service Center, it goes to my computer, so no matter which district where I am, okay. am they can get it. And that would be 330-723-6393, extension 144. Good. So people can take this and rewind it to get that number, or just call the Monona County Educational website. Service right. Center, or call our office here. We'll make sure that we get them in touch with you if they have a question. Um, one last thing, just to clarify, if people are out there wondering, gosh, has my kid ever been evaluated mm -hmm. for gifted? Every student is evaluated, or how does that work as far as the evaluation goes? Great. Um, Buckeye does whole screen testing in grade two, and that will be coming up in March. Um, they use the COGAT test for a cognitive test, um, cognitive abilities test, and also the Iowa test, which they will look at the areas of reading and math, specific academic mm -hmm, in grade two. Mm -hmm. um, they also do a whole grade testing in grade four, which was done in November. It was just completed. We're waiting for scores back. and. Um, Again, they get the COGAT and also the Iowa, but they did the whole Iowa specific academic. They looked in the areas of social studies, science, in addition to math and reading this year. Okay. So we will get those scores back and we will be notifying parents the results of those. Okay. Um, if it is not at those grade levels, they can contact me and we can, based on referrals, we can do referral testing of individual okay. students. Okay. But every student is given a, an evaluation in second grade and fourth grade. Correct. That's the, the COGAT and the Iowa test, the basic skills are given? Mm-hmm. Okay. Both of those grade levels. And those are both valid measures of a student's ability and they, if they're tested in the uh, gifted range. Now, are they all notified or only those students that test as gifted? Um, only the students who test is gifted are notified by me um, all the students well that's a great question they, get their results, <laughs> they, get their yeah. they do get their results I'm yeah. not sure what time of the year since I'm new okay. to the district yeah, as far as when they get that but they all get their results they do okay. um, now one last question I guess and maybe this is kind of I think sometimes maybe a misnomer a little bit but if somebody had their child tested in second grade and fourth grade and they were at that time were not gifted based on the evaluation and then they think in ninth or tenth grade well I think my child is gifted now technically once a child is identified as gifted they're considered gifted forever and mm -hmm. if they're I mean IQ is not something that generally increases or changes over time that they if they weren't gifted in second or fourth chances are they wouldn't test as gifted at a later time not that we wouldn't test or check that but theoretically once you've been tested you either are or you aren't and that wouldn't change over time is that an accurate statement 
theoretically that is correct. Um, as far as test taking skills, as the students get older, I mean there is an element of test taking ability and you know whether you're looking at all the answers, um, especially fine in second grade, they tend to look at the first and second or maybe third answer mm -hmm. and don't go clear mm -hmm. toward to the fifth answer, which may be it. Mm -hmm. So there is you know mm -hmm. that small possibility of test taking skills yeah. that yeah. should be considered. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that we need to know uh, overall about the gifted program in Buckeye? I think you've asked a lot of good questions overall. <laughs> well, good. Okay. Well, good. Well, again, the reason we do this is so that our parents and our community has the information that they need uh, about one of our programs. And, and again, we thank you for what you do for our gifted students. Um, between your work with our teachers, I think we're doing a lot of wonderful things uh, to challenge those kids that need a little bit more challenging in our classrooms. And I would just remind our families out there that if you have questions about our gifted services, Chris Rutledge is always available uh, either by phone or by email to answer your questions. Um, and again, if you can't find uh, her number either on our website or at the Medina County ESC, feel free to call our board office and we'll be happy to uh, give you that information to contact her. Um, but thank you so much for coming and talking to us about Gifted a little bit. And thank you for what you do for the kids in our district. Thank you for inviting me. We're very fortunate to have you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And this has been another episode of the Best of Buckeye. I want to thank you for tuning in and please look forward to other episodes in the future.